Why are Foxton so successful in London? Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because Foxton's probably used to occupy the place, the pub, where it's often at, occupy now. Everyone hated Foxton's in the sort of 80s and 90s because they were doing the things that people sort of knew they could do. Um, but the reason they were so successful was that they mined their database properly. Their CRM system was always set up to monetize their database, which no one else ever did. So um, I always had one rule. If ever you dealt with Foxton's, if you were a buyer, tenant, seller, landlord, you bought a mobile phone, pay-as-you-go mobile phone, I think they're called burner phones these days, aren't they? <laughs> so you buy a pay-as-you-go mobile phone, do the entire transaction on the mobile phone, and then throw it in the bin. Because every, otherwise, every six months for the rest of your life, you will have someone from the Foxton's call centre which is saying, hello, what do you think? And if you've got someone from Foxton's who's dealt with you before quite well, and they call you up and they say, what are you doing, and you happen to be thinking about letting your flat, you're going to say, yeah, come out and let it. Brilliant. Do you think they're as successful as they are, were 10 years ago? Uh, no, for I think some fairly obvious reasons. I think that uh, the cost base is now huge. I mean, you know, it's all very well charging two and a half, three percent in in Chelsea or South Kensington, but that does not work in Bexley Hill. So the model isn't perhaps as sustainable in in some of those locations. Uh, the cost of supporting these huge offices is obviously also enormous. Uh, they're now a, a public company. They IPO'd in two thousand and seven. So from that perspective, they are subject to an awful lot more regulation and uh, scrutiny than yes. they used to be. So I think their job is much harder. But they've still got a hell of a lot going for them. They're just not, they're not able to be as hyper-aggressive as they used to be. What would you do if you were the boss man at Foxton's going forward in the next 10 years? Continue to open more branches? Uh, no. I think if I was going to be, if I was MD of Foxton's, I'd be, I would definitely want to leverage the brand. I think you're aware Pete Rollings, who used to be their MD for a long time, is now a non-executive Uber and very involved, actually, with the business, which is, which is great. Um, Pete's... Um, Pete's view of the business is that it is a, um, what's the right word? Well, I think for reasons I espoused earlier, it's much more difficult to be the way it was now. But I, I, I don't think they can afford to open offices in the way they want to. So if I was in their position, I would um, be opening, I'd be using a brand to open, what's the right word, broker-only style areas. So I wouldn't be wanting to go into an area uh, use the Foxton's name. In fact, it's what they tried to do in the country. They tried to open offices in Sussex and Surrey. In well, almost like an associate model where you, the person's self-employed and gives like 40% of the feedback yes. to Foxton's. Yes. Because I think that's the way forward for yes. the state agency in the UK. Yeah. I know a lot of people tried it with Remax in the, in the 90s and it didn't work. That's quite clever. I thought. Well, the trouble with a lot of the Remax Keller Williams style operations now is that they do give the people very, very large territories to work in, and I think you need to be quite. You need to be. Well, know. we talked about that in a previous yeah. video. If you guys want to uh, see that, um, become hyper local and yeah. become the main person. Do you think? I I think that's a sublime idea. We didn't think of that. Yeah. Foxton's doing something like that. Well, the reason actually I mentioned Pete earlier was that I, I, I sort of lost my train of thinking. I was like, but, it, but the reason that. I mentioned Peter was that he told me that very early on, back in the mid 80s, after Foxton's just started, because they were so aggressive with their marketing and putting boards up everywhere, people used to think that people used to ring them up and assume they were a national brand, wow. even after they'd been going for two years. They were so solid with them with their branding and, and the way they went about it. Um, and I think that was that stood them in very good stead. I just think that, well, I'm fairly sure that's the sort of model they'll want to pursue. Interesting. Interesting times. Yeah. Thank you.